Welcome to 2024. Welcome to Muscle Science for Women. We're your hosts. You know us and love us, hopefully. If not, why would you be here? Uh, it's Ashley. It's Rachel. We've got lots to catch up on because we have not chatted in, well, we haven't chatted, you know, person to person, face to face um, in a little while. And we've been doing lots of stuff. We've been having lots of adventures, especially you. So let's get into it and let's catch up a little bit before we talk about muscle science, et cetera. For right. sure. Let's do All it. Right. So we have been in it. Thailand. Where should we start? Yeah, your trip, your trip. Yeah. You ate so much food oh and it God. looked so good. I mean, I don't think I caught all of it, but every time I looked at your stories, I was just like, the food. Oh, it just looked well, so Well, I made a highlight good. on my uh, Instagram of Thailand okay, and Singapore. So you can go back and look at all the stuff. Amazing. Um, okay. Yeah, it, it was, it was amazing. It was definitely like, trip of a lifetime, um, was there for two weeks. I went to, uh, Bangkok, Chiang Mai, um, and then an Island off of Phuket or Phuket. We really don't know how people say it, but it's spelled P H U K E T. Mm -hmm. Um, and then Singapore. So it was like three days in each location. Um, and it was phenomenal. Um, we ate, like literally went on a food tour at yeah. every single place and the food tours lasted like like they were like either all day things or like six hour things and you would just go to different parts of the area and literally just eat and a local um we found these things through airbnb have you ever done an airbnb experience before i haven't i've seen a bunch i've never gotten around to actually doing one yeah so anybody who's listening, if you go, if you're going on any types of trips or anything, um, Airbnb now has like, instead of just staying at places, it has an experiences tab and it's like, you can, there's literally so many different things like food tours. Um, obviously when we were in uh, Thailand, like looking at like temples and then like other, a bunch of other stuff and the locals will put it on. Right. But there's like reviews and you can look at, you know, if they got, you know, four plus stars, things like that. We did a cooking class through Airbnb. I saw that. that was my favorite. That was, I mean, as you can imagine, that was like my favorite experience out of everything. We literally went to this lady's house where she has a cooking whole thing set up. And it was like a six hour experience. We went to the market beforehand, cooked like literally five different Thai dishes each, ate them all. <laughs> um, and yeah, it was, it was amazing. Um, I feel like there are yeah. other aspects of culture, but I really wonder, like, are there people who travel to amazing distant lands and don't just think about food the entire time? Because that's all I do. It seems to be a focus for you too. It's like, when I go to a new place, I'm all I'm thinking about, I'm, I'm planning everything around eating stuff, but like eating yeah. stuff that's different than what I normally eat, eating stuff that is like, you know, what the people there eat. Like that's all I want to do and go to like the markets and the bakeries and what are their sweets mm -hmm. and what are their desserts and what are they, you know, just that's, that's, and then if you like, you, you know, fit in some exercise or some museums or some like sightseeing, like around the meals. Yeah. But I wonder like, are there people who don't really care about the food and just go to like, look at the beautiful sites? I Cause know. I can't imagine like you're missing out so much. I don't know, but that's definitely not me. And what I found was really cool is that you get to experience the culture through the food. Right. And it's like, I can tell you, we did a temple tour one day and it was like going to four of the different temples did not include food. Um, and I was miserable. <laughs> I was like, this is so, I'm sorry, but like, I was like, this is so boring. I'm sorry. Where I just don't snacks? care. I don't yeah. care. Um, it's cool to see like a, a huge, there was like a literal, like humongous Buddha in one of these temples. And I was like, yeah, that's cool. Um, but also it was really hot. You're mm -hmm. not allowed to wear, like you have to wear long pants mm -hmm. in all the temples. 
um and you have to wear like long shirts you can't like show any of your skin Mm -hmm. um so yeah that was like my least favorite thing but then on the food tours you go you're first of all you're walking to all different places or taking like local transportation like buses and you're getting the culture through the food but you're also learning about the history like while you're eating so it's like very enjoyable Mm -hmm. um at least for someone like me who I'm not like a museum person or a person who likes to just stand and learn about history. <laughs> I'm like, I want to go do something or I want to go eat something. If we're yeah. doing it at the same time, like that's cool. Um, yeah. So yeah, that was, that was cool. And then I was going to say one other thing and then I forgot. Oh, in Singapore, Singapore, have you ever been to Singapore? No, I've not, I haven't been to any Asian country and I need to, you need to put this on your bucket list. Also, as you can imagine, I have an entire Excel sheet of like literally of everything we've done or we did. And I'm going to go back and kind of edit it and be like, Oh, these were, this was like the good stuff. This was the stuff I would skip, which there mm. wasn't much, honestly, all the Airbnb experiences. Like I have like links to all of them. Um, so Anybody listening, if they want to email us, if they're interested in going to Thailand in the future and want an itinerary, I can send it on over. Um, Perks of being a Muscle Science for Women listener. There you go. And Singapore, you'll love this. We went to, because in Thailand, it's so cheap, right? Like you can get a full meal, like a huge full meal from a restaurant for $5 for the whole meal. That would be like, I don't know, $80 in the U.S. Mm -hmm. Um, and you can also get a full body massage for an hour for $3, like $3. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. So we basically saved a ton of money in Thailand because we didn't really spend it. And then in Singapore, we just like kind of blew it all. Um, Singapore, as they describe it is the, a playground for the rich. Mm -hmm. Um, that's like how one of the taxi drivers described it, which is, was definitely fitting. Um, it's illegal to chew gum in Singapore, yeah, like that. on the street. Um, but they have tons of Michelin star restaurants. So I got my first Michelin star, uh, two Michelin star experience experience. It was literally like six hours long and like a 12 course meal. Mm-hmm. And it was absolutely phenomenal. Um, is that, cause I was going to ask like, what was the most memorable meal? Was that it? I mean, God, there's so many to choose from, but yeah, that was probably in terms of the experience and the quality of the food and the quality of the experience in itself was really cool. And it was, it was expensive, but it was also cheaper than it would be in the U S. So I was like, if I'm going to do a Michelin star experience, like a two plus star experience, um, just for anybody who knows, like that's going to be without alcohol in the U S for a a place like that's like probably like 500 to $600 a person. Um, so that's what it was in Singapore, but because their dollar is, I believe like 75% of the U S dollar, it's actually like cheaper to do it there. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, anyway, I'm talking a lot, but there was a lot, um, and it was amazing and highly recommend a trip like that. If you're looking to experience different things and eat, eat a lot of, lots of food. I'm just trying to find out I because you I, you must have eaten Michelin star restaurants in New York. Like I've eaten a bunch of one star, but I'm just trying to Yeah, think, one star. How many stars does this place have? I went to once, I went to Le Bernardin in New York because a really fancy person took us. And again, if you if you're a foodie, whatever, you know about this place. If not, anyway, Eric Repair is the chef. He was like best friends with Anthony Bourdain. This place was like one of the only really still old school places. Like men need to wear a jacket. You women need mm-hmm. to like be dressed nice. Like, you know, like in New York, especially like you can, cause famous people in New York, you can't tell the difference between, I don't know, like a homeless person or a billionaire. Cause New Yorkers are just eclectic, right? They're just eccentric people. So everyone can dress like anything, but this is like one of those places where there's like white tablecloths and everything is very like old school French and fancy. And I'm just trying to find out how many, cause I know they've got a, at least a couple stars probably, yeah. but that, but that to me, that was like, it was almost like the experience was crazy because people told me it would be crazy. Like there were definitely less fancy restaurants that I had. I think I had better meals at. It's really just, it's more about, I don't know what you, 
what you want to get out of it, I guess. But, um, yeah, anyway, but this was definitely lived up to the hype. Um, I saw the pictures. That's the one I messaged you. I was like, Oh my, there was like a, some kind of bird. Yeah. The duck. Yeah. It was a duck. Um, yeah, there was a lot of, a lot of cool things and yeah. Um, kind of to bring this into health aspect and just kind of like that side of things, uh, to, to pull us back in, um, you know, I was talking with my like flex fam group a little bit. And, um, I think before I left, some people were asking like, how are you going to go about, like, are you going to be tracking stuff? Are you going to be like paying attention to that? I was like tracking a like 12 course Michelin meal. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I was like, I have no plans of tracking anything. Um, This is one of those experiences where it's like, okay, you're going to literally you're flying across the world. You're going, you like, you're going on vacation. This is a vacation. There's absolutely no reason why anybody, unless you're going to Thailand every other month, like you should not even think about that. Dive in experience, like everything you can. I absolutely ate in a surplus probably every single day, but I also walked a shit ton. Um, and I paid attention to like, the one thing I did pay attention to was like, okay, like I'm eating a lot. And so I'm going to make sure that I'm not like over consuming to the point where I like feel sick. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, that's not what I want to feel like, especially because it's like, I want to experience all the things. Um, so like with the food tours, for example, you get like little tastes of everything, but there were definitely some things where I'm like, I don't really like this. Like I'm not enjoying this. So I'll take a little bite of it, but I'm not going to finish it. Um, and it's, it really did actually help me to, um, practice a lot more mindfulness behind that too, which was a, a cool, um, what's the word? Just a cool part of it, I guess you could say. And a cool yeah. exercise. Yeah. That was the word I was looking for exercise. Yeah. Um, and then when I came back, I mean, honestly, also by the end of the trip, I was so full that mm-hmm. when we flew back, um, I, I ended up just fast because just the time adjustment and the flight and sleeping, like I ended up fasting for, I think it was like, it ended up being like 30 hours just inadvertently because I was just so tired and I was not hungry at all. Mm -hmm. And my body was like telling me like, Hey, you need to just like cool your jets for a second. And that's normal. Like I wasn't doing it as a, Oh, I feel bad about eating for the last two weeks. So I'm going to fast. It was just like, it kind of, it just happened. And my body, like after that, I was like, okay, now I can get back into the normal groove of things, get back into, um, you know, eating, my normal foods, you know, all that stuff. Um, And the last thing I'll say too with that is that um, in terms of working out, because people ask like, oh, did you lift? Did you do this? I had no plans of lifting at all. Like I was like, I'm just going to take the two and a half weeks off. And if there's a gym in the hotel and I have some free time, maybe I'll do it. And so I ended up like every, I would say like every fourth or fifth day, I did end up doing like a little lift just because I had some free time. I had extra energy from all the food. And so I went into the hotel gym and we stayed in some nice hotels and I just like had fun, right? Um, got my muscles working a little bit and that was really it. I didn't worry about like, oh, I'm gonna lose all my muscle. No, it doesn't happen in two weeks. So yeah, yeah just wanted to put that out there. And now I'll well, shut up. <laughs> no, need, no need to shut up. I, I love hearing about it. I mean, I think uh, you are describing an ideal way to approach a like once in a lifetime trip like that. And it's, mm-hmm. it's very timely. I'm going on a trip here in a couple of days, which I'll talk about in a minute, but yeah, I've been talking to a couple of my one-on-one clients, one of whom is kind of doing this very cool digital nomad sort of lifestyle where she works kind of similar to us where she doesn't have to be anywhere. And so she's taking some time and traveling to different places for like a month at a time. Um, and I know some friends who live like this and there are certainly pros and cons to every kind of lifestyle. And there are pros and cons to this one too. Um, but one of the things is, you know, how your schedule can get disrupted moving to different places and how there's different food and there's different, you know, um, gym situations and setups and whatever. Um, but one of the conversations I was having with her was just a reminder that she is, you know, obviously choosing to do this. She's being proactive in where she's going and how much time she's spending there. I think people 
sometimes again, because we have so much black and white thinking that we're like, okay, I'm traveling somewhere else. And so it's definitely going to be messed up. Like my schedule is going to be messed up. Everything's going to be messed up. I just like need to try not to go completely off the rails. And I'm reminding her, you have a ton of control over what you're doing. You know, you've already started looking into there's a gym, there's a gym nearby. Get, go get your membership for a month plan that out. You have a grocery store nearby, like maybe the food will be slightly different, but you have so much more control than you think you do. Mm -hmm. And also that again, similar to a couple weeks on a vacation, a month where you maybe aren't making gains, you aren't making progress doesn't mean that you're backsliding. It doesn't mean that you have to completely give up and like start over again. When you get home, you can absolutely at the very least maintain quite easily as we've talked about so much you know, before in other mm -hmm. episodes that if you are focusing on the basics, you know, controlling the things that you can control, you can still always eat protein at every meal. You can still always go for walks or do your daily movement. You can still always prioritize sleeping well, being hydrated, doing the things that, you know, getting outside and being in the sun. There are so many things you can do um, because she was already pre-worried before even going away. She's going to Columbia that she's going to, mm -hmm. she's made this progress in the last couple months and lost a couple pounds and feeling really good and getting in a schedule. And she's like, I'm going to come back and it's going to feel like I lost it. And I have to start all over again. I'm like, first of all, get that out of your head. Cause you're going yeah. on this thing. You know, you're going be positive. You have control over this and you can absolutely yeah. come back and just keep on rolling exactly the way you were. Um, so it's just good to hear again, people and from people like you, who people who follow you may think that you are somebody that is very aspirational, but also maybe like a little bit, maybe more disciplined than they are. Like they wish that they were as disciplined as you. Mm -hmm. And so to hear you say like, look, I still, you know, I took care of myself. I wasn't eating to be sick and I, I moved my body, but like, I didn't track a thing. Yeah. I enjoyed every single thing that I ate. Because that's what life is. That's part of yeah. being fit and being healthy is enjoying your life and knowing that you're resilient enough to kind of manage these blips in your schedule, you know? Yeah. And it also, yeah. I'll say too, it also takes practice going through it, sure. like learning from it. Because if this, you know, even maybe five years ago, I was pro would probably approach this completely different. Um, just where how much I've learned and changed and realize that like a vacation there's a reason why it's called a vacation and there's certain experiences in life that like you absolutely should not be tracking your food or worried about missing workouts but then that's not an everyday thing right it's it's understanding that and it's also kind of like learning from the past too like you know kind of thinking back to maybe a vacation like this that I went on five or six years ago um like when I went to, I did go to Germany, like I think it was right before the pandemic, I did have a different mindset then. Um, I was a little bit more like strict and like worried about gaining weight and things like that. But that's also because I, that was me five years ago, right? Like, so you learn as you go, as you go through different things, different experiences, you kind of like just being in this space, like, you know, you start to learn like what actually matters right? And what doesn't in the long term, right? Yeah. Um, and one other thing I wanted to ask you about too, which was cool that I used, have you ever heard of this, uh, uh, this app? It's called Time Shifter. No. So it's for jet lag, right? Yeah. Um, and it's cool because what it does is it basically, you download, download the app, your first trip is free. So no matter what the trip is, the round trip part of it, it's free. So you can kind of test it out um, and so the, I tested out with Thailand and what you do is you put in like your flights, your actual flights, like the time you leave, the time you land, any layovers you have in any places for when you go and when you come back. And it basically uh, shows you, you kind of have to go in the app and do it to really like understand what I'm talking about, but it shows you like, okay, three days leading up to when your flight is, this is how you should start to adjust your body to the new time zone. Um, and so it it shows you when you should expose yourself to light and when you should not, right? So, um, you know, putting blue light blockers on or just like being in the dark at certain times that you wouldn't normally be to help your body adjust. It also tells you when you should be consuming caffeine and when you shouldn't be based off the time. Um, and then also, uh, if you want to, you can include melatonin to help 
your body adjust. Um, and it's, it was really cool. Uh, and I did, I didn't do it all to the T, but I did do some of it leading up to when I left for Thailand, um, and also coming back. And it was, I feel like my jet lag was definitely, I mean, less than it would have been if I didn't do some of those things. Um, so it was cool. You should check it out. It's called time shifter. Anybody can do like a free, a free trip. Um, so it uses like light exposure, uh, caffeine, and then, uh, tells you like when you should go to sleep and when you should wake up, you know, all of that. Um, the only thing that it doesn't do, which I think this would be a cool aspect of it. Um, obviously there's like still not like tons of research on it, but like the fasting side of things like, Mm. oh, when you should eat and when you should try to fast, because that is also part of your circadian rhythm too. Like you're eating Mm -hmm. and and fasting windows, um, that's not included in it, but I feel like that would be a cool addition. So that is cool. That's, I think that's probably like the next level, because again, we're in a bit of a bubble where the vast majority of people are not thinking about like food timing and windows of eating and stuff. Yeah. We're just like, I eat when I feel like it. Um, maybe I'll use it when, uh, when I come to California to visit you this year, because yeah. you are, I, I want to say you're four hours behind because I'm as far yeah. East as you can get. Um, and that's not a huge time zone difference, but when you're sensitive to sleeping issues, like I am anyway, it, it can definitely be a thing. Yeah. Um, it's cool. Time shifter is what it's called. We'll put it like yeah. mention it in the show notes. Yeah, cool. No affiliation, but who knows? Maybe maybe someone. The only <laughs> person who is not sponsoring us, who should be sponsoring us, and I'm going to say it because they have not reached out to us yet. You know who I'm going to say. Ninja Creamy. Okay. Oh, Do you yeah. know how many yeah. people over the holidays, and I know they messaged you too. People like, bought a Ninja Creamy because you guys made yeah. some ice cream. I'm like, why are we not getting some commish <laughs> off this? Okay. Anyway, I'm happy the whole for world everybody. has it now, but it's we true. were the it's originals, true. but that's the whole thing. Like everybody in the world, you know, has element too. Yeah. And I still have a, a partnership with them. Cause I'm like, if I could make a couple bucks off this, listen, we got it. We, yeah. we free content creators need to make our money. Okay. Anyway, yeah. that's another conversation. Um, okay. Well, so- that shifts us. Oh, no, do you want to, do you want to talk about that? Well, I okay. was going to say, yeah, like speaking of sponsorship. So obviously new year, yeah. um, we got your new sponsors, sponsors yeah, yeah, that we're excited about. Um, and one of them, you know, if you've listened to my, uh, po- my older podcasts in the past, Metflex and chill, um, or any of the podcasts that I've been on, we, um, we're one of our new sponsors is Genova Diagnostics. Um, mm-hmm. And they, I've had their scientists come on my podcast, I, I believe like, I don't know, maybe three years ago, I've been, you know, working with them for a while. Um, and I've gone on their podcast, which is called The Lab Report. Um, it's their scientists who have their own podcast. I've gone on their podcast, I think twice before. Um, so Genova Diagnostics are uh, one of our new sponsors. So we're super excited about it. We're going to obviously be talking about them over the next few months. Um, they offer lots of different uh, diagnostic testing, um, ways to get tests done that you would not normally be able to get, you know, just like, like you can't really just go on the internet and buy them. You have to kind of go through either your doctor or a service like this. Um, so we're excited to work with them. We are going to be doing our own tests. I've done a bunch of their tests in the past and I've talked about them before. Um, but we're going to be doing some of our own tests here, uh, very soon and be kind of bringing you guys along the journey with that, explaining some of the benefits, um, to some of the tests and yeah. So I'm excited to to do it. And I like, I want to say here too, that this is obviously sort of, a a proactive next level kind of nerding out, uh, opportunity for people. This isn't, we're not saying that this is something you have to do the same Mm -hmm. way we do say you have to, you know, sleep and walk and eat properly and all of these things. Like I noticed recently there's been, you know, I don't know, like there's some stuff on social media where it's like all these like influencers are saying you have to cold plunge and you have to do this. You have to do that. It's like, no, we're not, nobody's saying that. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is stuff that could potentially provide you with some interesting information that could help you make some adjustments to your lifestyle that could improve your health. And we know, especially in the States where 
dealing with the medical system can be tough and expensive and confusing. And it's not really perfect up here in Canada either. So sometimes taking this stuff into your own hands and doing the research. And if there's something very specific that you are looking to just get more information on, these kinds of things can be really helpful. And they have a ton of uh, support for you. So that if you mm -hmm. have questions along the process, because this is like direct to consumer testing, right? You're not going to a, a doctor and having them do it for you. You're doing it. So they have um, resources that will help you interpret and understand these results. And you can talk to these people. Um, and as Rachel said, like you, we're doing two different tests, right? What's the mm -hmm. one you're doing? So I'm doing the GI effects. So I've already done the GI effects and it's basically, it's a stool sample. So you take, I'm doing like the three day collection. And this is the one I did in the past where you basically collect stool samples, um, you know, follow poop. all the, yeah, poop. Um, they send you a kit right? So they send you a kit with all the instructions, um, tell you exactly what to do. You, you know, put it, do your collections, store them in the fridge and send them all back together in their little nice tidy box. Um, then they obviously have like their whole laboratory that does the, you know, interpretation or assessment or whatever you want to call it. Um, and then they kind of spit out a report that shows you, depending on what you get, right? So all the tests have different levels. You can look into different things, um, you know, depending on what what you want to see. You can do add-ons is what they call it. Um, and so it basically spits you out a report and then they help you to interpret that report too, right? So it's not just like, oh, here's this report and it's like 10 pages of just tons of different stuff. Uh, they tell you exactly like, okay, this is this is what we see. Right. Um, and so we, I talked about this last year, I was dealing with some gut stuff. Right. Um, and I did a GI effects and it actually did. Um, I didn't do it right away. I did it after a period of time of kind of not really getting to the, like not having relief of some of the things that I was dealing with. So I was like, okay, the next step is like, let's dig a little deeper, right? Let's look a little deeper. Let's actually see what may be going on from like, I don't know, uh, different like gut bacteria perspective and potential parasites and things like that, um, which I didn't end up having that, which was which was good. But it gives you more insights and actually shows you like, OK, this is literally what's happening inside of you. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so that's that's I'm what I'm doing. Which one are you doing? I'm doing, and I have this pulled up because again, I got, I have the box right here, but again, I'm going on vacation next week. So I'm going to do it when I get back, but I am doing the, I guess it's called metabolomics. It's mm -hmm. a personalized nutritional assessment. So basically, and mine, you've got poop, I've got pee. I got to do a urine collection <laughs> and, uh, it's basically, it's, kind of talking about it's a way to assess any functional needs for antioxidants, B vitamins, minerals, digestive support, amino acids, stuff like that. And I mm -hmm. think, you know, I like to think I have a pretty healthy diet. I don't generally have at this point, knock on wood, any complaints about generally anything in terms of digestive health or whatever, but, um, it's saying, you know, it, some of this testing can be around if you're, if you have things like maybe fatigue, chronic stress, mood disorders, inflammation. Inflammation is mm -hmm. kind of one area that I've always been a little bit concerned about. I, I remember doing some like, telomere test or something years ago that was basically, it told me, and I think even my 23 and me, I've done all this crap, which I don't know, some people aren't into, yeah. but anyway, something told me somewhere along the line, something told me that like, I don't have a very good I don't do a good job of getting rid of like free radicals. Like I'm not, I need like more antioxidant support. Like I'm, and I'm worried now, of course, cause I'm getting old that I want to support, you know, my body kind of getting rid of the waste, recycling things, moving things along, staying, you know, as not inflamed as possible. Um, so that's sort of an area that I'm kind of interested in. So I just, you know, I like, I talk a big game, but how I think I eat pretty well, I think I figured out a mm -hmm. diet that really works for me, but maybe there may be something that I'm missing or some piece that I could be improving and working on. So I'm, I'm interested just to see what it says. And again, I'm not necessarily going to hold this as the, the, yeah. the main marker of anything, whatever, but it could tell me something. And if it tells me something surprising. Maybe that's just something I take to my doctor. Maybe that's something I follow up further and get more information on. That's what these things are. They're tools and resources exactly. um, 
So anyway, I think it's cool. And we'll, we'll, I'm sure we'll have somebody from Genova on to chat and kind of maybe walk us through even our results or something that could yeah. be interesting for people who like to get real nosy, um, with other people's <laughs> <laughs> results. Um, but anyway, we'll, we'll stop talking about this now, but just for anybody who is interested, you can go to their website, gdx.net and they, it talks about all the different tests they do, tons of information, um, pricing and all that stuff. And of course we do have a discount code, which is MSW10 for 10% off if you want to do a test too. Um, but we'll keep you posted. We're, we're going to do these tests like later in the month and then we'll, um, let you know what happens. Yeah. Cool. All right. So. Let's just finish this off here. I'll tell you about the trip that I'm going to take, which is very different than yours. Um, I'm going to Mexico in a couple of days. I think I've talked about this before on the podcast, but it's just, you know, like seven days at a resort with my family and another family, not so much a vacation because again, when you have a toddler that doesn't exist, it's more like we're just watching our kid in a warmer place and getting to go to the beach every day, which I'm really excited about. Um, But it's going to be a little bit of a different vibe because I don't want to go completely off the rails, you know, similar to the conversation we were having earlier and these conversations I've been having with my clients. Um, Seven days isn't a big deal. You know, it's not, you know, you could be pretty chill and have fun and enjoy yourself and have some drinks. It's not going to be a big deal in the grand scheme of things. However, I do have this 10K that I'm running like a week Mm -hmm. after I get back. And it's going to be a bit of a jarring switch to spend like a week sitting around the beach in the heat, like eating whatever and then coming back to the depths of winter and going for a run outside yeah. and the ice and stuff. So I do want to, I don't want to come back feeling crappy from seven days of drinking pina coladas or whatever. So, yeah. um, I'm definitely going to eat to my heart's content. Um, I'm going to try to not drink too much, which is going to be easy for me. Honestly, I'm not really a drinker. And there's a beautiful gym there. We're going to be outside. I'm going to try to like do some beach workouts because I really enjoy that. I have a feeling. I thought you just said beach workouts. I mean, I did. I I did say that. (laughs) Well, I didn't, but now I'll do that too. And I won't post it on social media, but I'll let you know if any workouts are done. Um, (laughs) That should be the name of our next program. Yeah. Must Come twerk out with workouts. Them. Yeah. Um, Sorry. so anyway, yeah, it's going to be, I'm looking forward to it. I am, you know, uh, mildly concerned about traveling with a kid, but I think, I think it's going to be nice. It's going to be so good for anybody who lives in a cold place, especially us Canadians. We get it. These like winter warm vacations are absolutely necessary. Like the vitamin D that I'm going to absorb next week I'm going to come home in the middle of the winter with a tan. Like it's just going to be so good for my morale. Yes. I am so pumped for it. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I, I'm going to, I'm not tracking anything. I'm not going to like plan any workouts. I would like to do a run or two while I'm there and it'll probably be on a treadmill. Um, but yeah, it's just a reminder. It's like, I think being mindful about what you want to get out of it before you go. Cause I think one of the th- ways I've always messed myself up and I'm sure maybe your, your mindset is a little bit different. So maybe this wasn't one of your challenges, but one of my challenges has always been not like being reactive to what's happening instead of proactive. Like I have all the mm-hmm. tools, but if I don't go into a situation thinking, what do I want to get out of this? I kind of let the situation take over. And then it's like, I'm two days in and I've eaten all this crap and I feel like garbage. And I'm like, yeah, I might as well just keep doing this. And it's like, why did I do this? You know, whereas if I go into it thinking I'm there for seven days, I don't want to feel like crap. I'm going to eat what I want, but I'm going to maybe minimize the desserts, which are the trigger for me, you know, maybe a little treat every day, but nothing more. Cause you know, it's like buffets, like that's how resorts, it's just like so much food, right? Like you could feel like garbage really easy. Um, and maybe I'll have like a drink one or two nights, which is way more than I normally drink over the course of a month. So, um, you know, just, just go in with a plan and then it's easy to follow the plan. If you don't go in with a plan, you, and you're in a place where all there is, is temptation and other people telling you to eat and drink and whatever you're going to, yeah. you, why be surprised that that's, what's going to happen to you. Right. So, um, yeah, so I'm looking forward to it. I just want to like that. minimize, minimize the, uh, minimize the damage, have fun, just get, just yeah. spend so much time on the beach, hopefully reading a book and 
come back ready yeah. to run my race. Yeah. And I'll just, I'll just say this really quick. What's cool about that too. And again, this is what, what I mentioned before about like, when you go through the different experiences, like, like I said, my vacation five years ago is completely different than this one because I, uh, I tested out different things and I experienced different things. And I learned from those experiences. And mm -hmm. what I've learned is that when you go into a situation where you do have some sort of like plan or like you're being proactive about it and you actually follow through with that and you come out the other yeah. end and you're like, I did what I said I was going to do. The amount of confidence and feelings of accomplishment that you get from that experience that brings you into like, it's just like a, I don't even know, like it fills, it fills a, a piece, a part of that cup for the next mm -hmm. time. And so when you go on vacation the next time, you're like, I want to feel how I felt last time, because I know that I, I enjoyed myself. I got everything I wanted out of it, but I didn't come back feeling any regret or any just like feeling like crap. And that those, every time you do that, you're basically leveling up and leveling up and building that not resilience, but you're building that ability to be like, I know I can do this because I did it before. Yeah. And Reliability. you have that. Yeah. So yeah. I think that's really cool. And that's how I've learned to let go more. Like again, the Thailand trip, that's why it was so different than five years ago, because I did the things that led up to it and I practiced and I learned from them. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, a hundred percent, I think if you can do that, even if you just do it once, like you go yeah. into a situation and you're like, I'm going to do this. And then you follow through with it. It's like, you just feel this new, like sense mm -hmm. of, holy shit. I did what I said I was going to do. And mm -hmm. I feel amazing. And I want to feel like this again. It's a dopamine hit actually that you get. Um, and you want to do it again and again. Um, but so it's yeah, a, a anyway. valuable one. Yeah. Like yeah. I, I, I know it does sound corny, but it's true. Like when you, when you do the opposite of that and you maybe eat some stuff you said you weren't going to, or you didn't do the workouts that you said you were going to, and you get done, you don't feel like crap because you gained five pounds or because you lost your gains. You feel like crap because you feel like you failed yourself. That's what exactly. it is. And so it's the same going into it. Don't set crazy. Like I'm not going to set the goal of don't eat any desserts. Don't drink any yeah. frosty drinks while you're there. That's no fun. My goal is going to be, yeah. I'm going to set the, the parameters and they're exactly. going to be reasonable. And then I'm going to follow through and then I'm going to feel good about myself. So yeah, that's, exactly. And I'll keep you posted if up I for do success. That. Yes. Okay. Yes. We got to go. Cause can you tell well, it's yeah. dark over here? I can <laughs> see that. Out of light. It's like, it's nighttime over here. Um, all right guys. Well, thank you for joining us in the new year. And it's just bigger and better as we go. We're over 2 mil, over 2 million downloads. Crazy. No big deal. <laughs> um, getting new sponsors, new ideas, new things. We've got some new stuff cooking on the horizon that we're going to launch for you this year. So we'll talk about that at some point. Um, but if you have anything you want to say, you know where to send it, right? Muscle Science for yes. Women, the number four at gmail.com. Tell us what you think. Tell us what mm -hmm. you want to hear about. Tell us what you want us to talk about. Ask us questions. Um, and, and share well, on social media, if you'd like yes. on Instagram, um, if you're enjoying the podcast, you can take a screenshot and like post it in your story thingy, um, and tag us and we'll reshare it. That always helps kind of spread the word about yes. the show. And that helps us out too. Um, please, so yeah. please do. All right, mm -hmm. guys, until next time, don't do stupid shit. Don't be insane. Bye. Mm -hmm.